I have a vehicle with a fuse box in the engine bay that is held down with a nylock nut, similar to this one, 8 millimeters. And you can see at the moment that's quite easy to turn by hand, but I can assure you with a little bit of corrosion in the engine bay, it's almost near impossible. I mean, you, you can't even get your fingers in it anyway because it's in a recess. So I was thinking rather than try to carry around a socket set, and believe me, even a socket's hard to get on here because there's very limited headroom, it would be nice to be able to design something and 3D print something to do the job. Now the issue is sometimes with 3D printing, um, if you imagine how it's layered up, that you won't have the strength for that. So I'm going to design something right now and we'll see how it works under torque. We're in Fusion now. Let's start by creating a new shape. A cylinder. Yes, indeedy, a cylinder. Now, I'm not entirely sure how big we want to make it. So we know that we have an 8mm hex head thing. And uh, it might be a good idea, and you can't see this, of course. I'm taking a ruler to see what are the across flats dimensions. And 5, 6, 7, 8. So it seems to be 8mm across flat. So if we measure point to point, it's looking more like 9 so you're probably going to want to make this at least 12 to make sure it's got enough meat. So we'll make that oops, 12 millimeters. And in terms of the length, really, uh, it could be as tall as you want. In my application, maybe let's go for 50 mil. And we might put a little toggle handle on the top at that too. So we'll make that 50 mil. Great. So now switching back to the top view, we need to figure out how do we make a hex. So I'm going to have a quick look here in the options. There's obviously nothing here particularly for a hex, but if we do a new sketch, I'm sure there's a chance that we'll be able to sketch one out. So going up here to create, let's see what options we have. Rectangle? Nope. Circle? Arc? Polygon? Yes, we do want to polygon. And do we want it circumscribed? <laughs> Be careful when you say that. And this says, select, create a polygon using the center point and the midpoint of one edge. And then an inscribe, create a polygon using the center point and the vertex. Mm, I'm not really sure, to be honest. Let's just go for the first one. Let's try a circumscribed and see if that's wrong or right. So if we go for eight millimeters, uh, <laughs> probably not that. OK, I think I'm being silly here because it's actually defined by a radius. So if you look there, that's giving you a radius, not a diameter. So that should be four millimeters. And maybe because we want to add a little bit of tolerance, how about 4.2? So that will give us 8.4 if we need it. Now we'll rotate that round. Bang. So that's our shape sketched out. I'm going to click finish the sketch. Now, something I'm not entirely sure. Let's see if we can use the inspect tool. Let's do the flat to flat because you need it to be eight millimeters flat to flat at least. But here we have 8.4. Maybe that's a little bit too big, but we'll see. I think it's going to be fine for this application, but you might want to play with the tolerance depending on your printer's capability. So we're going to go to the extrude. And you can see we can cut that right through as much as we want. Now, I'm actually going to go... Mm, I don't really know how deep that thread was. I'm going to assume it's at least 40 millimeters. So I'm going to do 40 millimeters up like that. But then on the other end, I'm going to actually still give the ability for if the screw thread is a bit bigger. So I'm going to just make a circle and I'm just going to line that up there. Boom. You see there with the uh, kind of the diameter of the hex, if that makes any sense at all. And you can see you can pull that through. And as long as you haven't gone outside the bounds, it won't mash up your hex. I mean, I should have gone from the other end, but it doesn't really matter. And you can see now I've got that nice little circular bit there at the top. And you want to make a toggle handle. So if you're 3D printing this, you probably want to print it handle down. So just bear that in mind when you're designing your handle because you want this to be perfectly vertical and you don't want any supports. So let's make a box and I'm going to click this face and I think I'm just going to go for something clunky. I mean, nothing too special at all. And I didn't even measure this out. So I'm just on the fly. I reckon that's about 26 millimeters to make it even Stevens. There we go. 
10 mil would be fine on that and you can make it as as glamorous as you like now let's think would that be a big enough toggle i think we might want to be able to put a little bit more torque on it um so i'm just going to pull these out a little bit more just to see i'm going to do it by eye as well just to sort of see how much i want to do why not quite sure why it's not letting me select that hmm That was really weird. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to add eight millimeters on that end. Oh, it's really long now. I'm going to add eight millimeters on this end. It's strange why it's not letting me select it in the usual way, but that's fine. Maybe I've confused it. And then what I'm going to do as uh, an attempt to make it look a little bit prettier, we're going to just fillet these down. Oh, look at that. Now it does look like a little, like it's been designed. There we go. Right, so with a bit of luck, that should all 3D print. Now, if you want to, you could add strengthening ribs and things like that. You really shouldn't need it, but the problem you might get if you don't is that your 3D printer might make this all hollow and then this could be very weak on the shell. So. I kind of like the idea of adding them, but just very simple ones. So I'm just going to select a box. I'm going to put a box here and I'm just going to click around there. And you're going to say, yeah, isn't that going to destroy your circle that you put in the middle? And it will, um, but I'm going to just, I'll pull that back later. So don't worry about that. And then we're just going to say, oh, I think five mil will be more than adequate and we'll make that a join. So we just join that there, which is good. And then I'm going to fillet these down just to be pr pretty. Look at that. Just to make it look like it's been designed. And if you want to, remember we have that circle there. I'm just going to create another circle, another cylinder because, uh, yeah. I'm going to clear it right there. Boom. Right to the edge there. Just to clear that internal bar because we definitely don't want that bit of internal bar going on. So I'm just going to switch it this view. <laughs> and you can see I've started again from the wrong end, but that's okay. And if we look down there, you can see, yeah, nicely cleared. Now I'm just going to double check the bodies to make sure yep it's all still a single body that's my eight millimeter toggle so i'm going to save that say eight millimeter um, socket toggle that will be fine and i'm just going to go to file and then 3d print oh yeah you always have to select what you actually want to print hit ok and then hopefully your 3d printer software will have loaded so i'm going to do a range and i'm going to do well, auto rotate's not really necessary, but let's zoom in. And you can see there we've got the bamboo cool plate going on. What color shall we make it? Well, I think it's a good idea just to check the device settings. Make sure we're the right one. And when you've got your bamboo, make sure you synchronize to whatever the, the uh, printer has, otherwise you'll end up with the wrong uh, filaments. So yeah, black is fine. And I'm just gonna make sure, yes, it's all filament one. And you've got these options here for quality, strength, speed, and support. So I'm gonna make sure support's off because we don't need it. Strength is an easy one. Uh, sorry, I was gonna say easy one, not quite an easy one because you're never quite sure on this. But you see this infill, if you change it from 15% to maybe fiddy, percent as they say in the streets um, when you slice it it will have fewer cavities and if I go through and show you oops start from the top down and we will zoom right in and I'll rotate it you can see there that it's actually all done in single passes yeah only that toggle bit has a bit there and let's play with that just for fun. So we say, actually, no, we don't want that just to be 50. We want it to be really strong. Um, we're going to make it 85. 
I mean, because we've got spare time. You're not worried about how long. And you can see it's much denser in there. But really, that's not where you want it. It's actually the junction. It's the junction between that and these parts where this thing's most likely to snap off. So you can see that's why we added those little wings for a bit of extra torque. I think it'll probably be okay. I'm willing to give it a go. I'm quite amazed, though, that it's going to take an hour to print. But, you know, let's hit print and go for it. <laughs> Send. And you can see that after a bit of jiggery and pokery, the printer's come online and it's getting ready to print. And as you can see, it's still printing. However, it gives me time to contemplate recent uh, movies. I watched The Creator on an aeroplane recently and I thought that was pretty fantastic. Probably my favourite thing in that movie were the bombs because Nomad was using, uh, you know, obviously they're anti-AI, spoiler alert. Um, and I thought the bombs were cool because you could see that they were intelligent, inverted commas, but dumb, all right? And you go, yeah, that's nice distinction between AI and regular procedural computer I. It's so close now, I can practically taste it. So I sat watching the harness being printed and then I decided, hang on, I could just be getting on with something else. So I've got a piece of wood here and I've put in a bolt and there is my nylock. Let's see if I can... <laughs> Already it's quite hard to get in because you know you have to stop that rotating, but unusually it is still quite hand tight. So what I'm going to do though, in order to really make sure that this is a good test, I'm going to crank on it with these pliers. Unfortunately this is a screw bolt and I'm going to really screw that in there. And you can see, and I'll zoom in and show you, that there's a fair bit of torque on there because it's actually pulled the pan head <laughs> into the wood. And yeah, there's no way on earth you're getting that out by hand. Now, back to the printer, because hopefully it's about done. 99%. I think that looks pretty much done to me. I'm going to go yank it off. Literally fresh off the printer. I left it at 99%. I think that 1% is just lowering the bed. So let's have a quick look. It has all of the features we wanted. There's your hex head. Now, it might be a bit loose. You remember that tolerance we added, but that's fine. And there's our little turny handle. It all seems pretty convincing. So first things first, it does fit. And that is the amount of compliance we have. I think we can tighten that up in a future build. Now, remember, that little bit of play, though, will make this weaker because, of course, it means you're not sitting nice and flat on the edge here. You're actually going to be between them. So makes it weaker. But let's see how it goes with this. So I guess I was going to hold the screwdriver there, but I probably will start without that just to see. Oh, ha! Huh. Look at that. Look at that. That actually worked. <laughs> That worked absolutely fine. I've got to hold it now because it's a bit loose, but yeah. Wow. Okay. So that's good. Um, let's really tighten this up now. I want to get it as tight as possible. And of course, if you're doing it on a piece of metal, it's going to be even tighter than this because this is wood. But let's go for it, shall we? Maybe eight millimeters is. There we go. Now that's totally flush. Maybe with just eight millimetres there, you can never really over-talk them. You'll probably snap it. Who knows? Anyway, that is like nothing. That, what? Well, tickle me pink, as they say. Um, I'm blown away by that. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to bother even adjusting the uh, tolerance on it. I mean, it's nice and loose. Crikey. Yeah. It works fine. Look, you can see that's undone that. Huh. So maybe you can 3D print sockets. In fact, I think you could probably 3D print quite big sockets and still have them work. Not that I'm going to do that today. I'm probably just going to clean this one up and then, you know, try it in the vehicle. But that's pretty good. I'll leave this uh, down below, a link to it on printables or where whatever current 3D printing site I'm currently posting things. But there you go. Uh, if you do need an 8mm socket, it works absolutely fine. As ever, thank you for watching.